All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So to, to do anything here, remember we have to plug our board in, and I just got my board plugged in. I'm not going to necessarily use the LEDs for anything today, but uh, we could use them. But I'm going to go back and, oh, I guess before I do anything, I've got to put the projector on, right? And hopefully... Not there. Okay. And I'm going to go through a number of these instructions here that we we went through here and, and talk a little bit about these addressing modes. So, right there. So I'm just going to kind of go through through these a little bit at a time. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that, but. Uh, let me bring up the software, and I'm just going to use Blinky right there. This is the, the Blinky that we did last time. I don't know, this might not, is this still Blinky? Yeah, this is Blinky. So as you recall, this one here, connect, and all this does is just blink my LED. Well, is it blinking my LED? No, I, I haven't run it that. So this is just the original Blinky, is what all this is right there. So I'm going to start with that, and I'm going to, as I did last time, use this as my starting point, and I don't care if I wipe it out, I'll save it as something else here. Let me just, matter of fact, let me just close it. I'm just going to copy everything and create a new directory. Right there. Let me just copy everything. Copy, file, close file, close the project. Right there. And I just create a new right there. Location. Browse for folders. And I'm gonna put it in the same directory. Right here. This is my blinky right here. And make new folder and I'm going to call this 22 July July 2014 right there okay we're gonna put it there and I'm just gonna call this file July 22 and the reason I called it July 22 instead of 22 July is sometimes it doesn't like numbers for the first, not there, 2014. Right there, 20, I guess it's 2015, isn't it? We're going to add it to project. Blank file, and we're going to call it an ASM source file. So I'm creating a, a, a new file right here. And I'm just going to paste everything that I had there. And the reason I did this is just so that I can... I don't have to recopy everything in up there. Because remember that every file is going to have that there. And I'm going to call this uh, file name July 22, 2015.asm right there. That's our file name right there. And I'm going to go ahead and delete all this right here. I'm just going to delete everything here. Right there. So, again, I, I, I left the LED in case we decide to use it right there. Because I'm going to probably show us some little demo that there. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go through here and let's just do some do some testing here. So let's just move a number 30 right there right there and I'm going to put a jump start and I'm going to start right there that should work that there and just compile this right here and see oh it doesn't like something here Oh, I didn't put the up there. 
right there. So when so when, when I do this, now this program does absolutely nothing. All it does is just move the number 30 then into A. Not there. So so I've got a very simple. Everything prior to the to the start is just simply copied from Blinky, and that's our shell for any program that we write. We talked about that. So what we want to see is whether or not this actually moves out there. And I'm going to put another one in here called move a 30 or 35. So you can see move right there. So I've got three commands that I'm going to just go through and walk through step through through them going through that. In order to see this happen, anything happen, I need to set turn on my debug windows right there and right here. So if I turn on under my debug windows, view debug windows, I can see the accumulator A, I can see B right there. So I single step through the right program right there. And what I'm seeing is the address is is changing. My program counter is at 803. If we were to look at our code, we'll find out that our main is actually at 80 is at 800. That's just where this assembler places it, right there. So as I single step through this right here, right there. Now this is my first command I did, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to move the number 30 to A. So when I execute this command, you see. That the accumulator says 1e. Now 1e, I didn't put an h there so that it shows it as in hex right there. So if I was to convert 1e to hex, you would find that it's the number 30 right there. And I'll pull out my old calculator here, hexadecimal, and 30. is one e hex so 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 that works right there so the next command i do is i get a, i'm going to move 35 over and you see now it's 23 and again 23 is the same and then i'm going to move a to b right there so we can see that our immediate and our register to register is working exactly the way it should be working right there so that there now let me just change this to put the put the h's after after this, so that we don't have to do the calculations there. Compile it, download it again. Let's see, there's my 30, there's my 35, and my 35 is moved to B. So it does exactly, so my immediate and my registered to register is, move, is, is working exactly the way it's supposed to. Now, th the next thing we want to do is we want to, under our view, Let's debug windows. Let's put the registers on here. Again, we're losing a lot of our screen when we do this. We don't have a lot of screen space here. So now I see my various registers here. So I'm just going to add to this program. Let's move to R0, 25 hex. Let's move to R1. And I forgot my number sign there. And 35 hex. Again, we just compile this, and I'm I'm just going through all the various right there. There's our 30 in there. There's our 35. There's our 35 moved to there. There's my 25 in R1. There's my 35 in R or R0 and R1. So we can see that we can move the immediate data to registers just fine. Now, as we go through and look at our slides, right there, that there. Now let's test this one right here. And what we want to do is we want to move into our data point. We're not, I'm not gonna use anything with a data pointer right here. Let's go back here and let's put into our data pointer the address, or we'll just use address 30 for now right there. So if 
what we're, what we're looking at here is let's move move into address 30 move R1 and we're going to put R1 right there and let's see what happens when we do that right there okay now when, when I do this what I need to see is memory right there so I need to also look under debug and we want to look at memory external memory disassemble RAM right there so here's my RAM right here right there in location 30 is going to show up here somewhere out there we'll, we'll see it when we run through our code let's go through and single step through here again move a we're seeing things move that there there's our yeah, these aren't changed because they haven't been changed. R1. And we should see 35 in location 30. Well, 30 is farther down. And there's here's my 35 right there. And actually, R1, see right there, right there. Let me move 30 hex R0 right there. And let me, that way we can see a change. So what we're seeing on the screen, let me just talk, explain a little bit what, what we're seeing on the screen. This is our code right here, our assembly language code right there. And we're, as we single step through this, we can see things. This window here is the internal workings of the microprocessor right here. The program counter, the stack pointer, the data pointer, the program status word, the accumulator, the B register, uh, watchdog timer registers, various, we haven't talked about these down here, but there we'll talk about that. These are my eight registers right there, and this is the RAM. This is my data RAM, and it goes from zero, zero to the top, all the way down to we went all the way to the bottom, it'll go to FF right here. Right there. So that's my that's that's my RAM right there, is what we're seeing there. So we're seeing the inside of the processor. So did I download this? Yeah. Okay. So when I single step through this, I'm ignoring all this up stuff here. Now I'm gonna move 30 into the accumulator. There's my 30 into the accumulator. You see that? That's my immediate move. Then we're going to move. 35 into the accumulator. And there's my 35. You see the 35 show up. And I'm going to copy the accumulator to B. And there's my 35 in B. Now I'm going to copy the number 35 in R0 and, and 35 in R1. Now those didn't change because they were already there. You know, that there. Then I'm going to copy R1 into location 30. Location 30 right now contains. 35, so it's not going to change. Right there. Thirty-five. But now I'm going to copy twenty-five into that location. And notice that this changed to a twenty-five there. So I'm changing I'm changing the, the memory right there. See? And the fact that I put 30 here means that it's address location 30 right there is where it's at right there. So this is, so we're looking at here, this is immediate to register. Immediate to register, register to register. Immediate to another register, immediate to another register. This is a register to a memory location. Now if I, I could change this and put number 99 there, for example. That there, compile this. Download. Yeah. Uh, you can use, you only can use R0 and R1. You can use, you can use all, anything up to R7. Even R2, R2. R3, R2, yeah, they're all open. You can use any of the registers. I'm just using R0 and R1 because that's all I need for right now. 
right there. But yeah, you can change that to say, uh, R3, for example, right there. Right there. So you can change it to any of those right there. So now as I go through and run this through again, again, I'm single stepping, I'm not hitting the run. The reason I'm not hitting the run is you won't see anything happen if you hit the run. You want to see these registers and these memory locations change as you execute your code one by one. It's the only way you're going to see what's happening right there. So I move 30 into the accumulator. I move 35 into B, into the accumulator. I move the accumulator over to B right there. I move 25 into R0. I move 35 into R3 this time, right there. You can see that there. I just changed it to R3. Then I'm going to put the, the, the number 99 in 30 hex. Now, notice that it says 63 there because I forgot the H again, right? So 63 is is by, or is hexadecimal for for, for 99 decimal, that's there. If I ran this again and put the H there, it would show 99, right there. So, and then I move 30, R0, R0 right now has got 25, so if I step through it again, see now I see the 25 show up, it's right there. So you can, you know, the, the whole idea of this is for you to kind of see how these things, these instructions are showing up, that there. Now if I had a magnifying glass and I could look inside the chip, I could see that. What this program is doing is, is giving me a way to see what's happening in the chip right there. That there. And you know, let me go ahead and do something else here. Let's go ahead and go through a short little loop. I'm going to just add a loop to this right here. Right here. And our loop, uh, let's just call this loop one. Loop one. And Let's decrement a, a right there. And let's do a jump or jump not zero back to loop one. Now before I do that, let's move into a ten right there. And again, I'm I'm not using I'm just using by or decimal right here. So if I do this right here, up there, and again, I'm, I'm going to cheat here a little bit, I'm going to just put a break point here, because we've gone through this here, and just hit the run here, and just take us to that point right there, so that I don't have to go through every step up there. So now as I go through here, my next command is I'm going to move, you know, there's my that there, and my next command, now A10 is 0A, right? I decrement from A, there, so it's 9, and I jump back to loop 1, right there. See that? I run that again, accumulator's 8, now it's 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, one, now I decrement it, it's a zero right there. So now it will not do the jump right there. So now it goes down here, it jumps back to start. So I've now set up, oh, my battery is low. That, that's not good news right there. So you can see how I can do a short little loop right there. Right there. So at this point, I'm going to change this a little bit. But before I do that, I need to, uh, audio, can I, let me, that there, well, if my battery goes dead, it goes dead, that there, that there. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this to B, and make sure it works here. Reassemble it. Download it again. Right there. And the reason I reason I change this to B is just simply because I'm going to use A to keep track of some numbers. I'm going to 
add up some numbers right there, right there. So we just stepped through this here, and we're going to see now that B is the one changing there, right? And what is happening here? Oh, guess what? The jump not zero does not work with B using B. So you have to use A. So you can see we just learned something that there. That there. So if you're going to be doing a jump not zero, you you have to use A. Did that, did, let me restart this here. Reset. Right there. Notice here as I go through this, B is. Nine, eight, seven, four, three, two, one. B is zero at this point right here. So this jump should not, it should not jump back to loop one, but it does. Because the program status word is only looking at A. So in order for this to work, you have to use A. Right there. Right there. Oh, I'm sorry. You can see when it gets down to two, one, see, then it does the jump back. So you have to use B if you're or the accumulator if you're going to do a count. That's the you you cannot use B in this particular case. You can do the decrement, but the jump but the jump not zero does not work using B. You have to use A. Only A. Only A. Yeah, A is the only one that's going to change the um, the program status word. Because if you run this through again, you'll notice that he, this program status word right here, as I go through through this here. You'll notice that it's a one, it's a one, it's a one. At some point when we get to a zero, the program says where it changes, but that there, but you see it, it keeps track of whether the that there, but it only keeps track if we're using the accumulator. So so let's just go through here and let's just for example in here, I'm going to put before the loop here, uh-oh, I'm going to lose my, I'll tell you what, give me a second here.